Hey guys, happy Black History Month. Today this video is going to be covering uh, a little braid out tutorial and kind of discuss some hair care. So we're going to get right into things. We are starting with freshly washed, still wet hair. We are fresh from the sink. So the key to any good braid out or wash and go style is a good condition, which means lots of moisture and a good detangle. And to get that good detangle, you need a good condition, lots of moisture. You're also gonna need some clips. So I like to section the hair out into smaller sections, clip it out of the way so that it is less overwhelming and just a lot more manageable to work in smaller sections as we detangle. So then I just get started and I grab one of those small sections and I just work the pick through starting at the bottoms and working my way to the top. I'll use my fingers too to finger comb out if there's any knots or if I'm having any trouble anywhere. Um, and then I just work one section at a time. I don't move on to another section until I'm sure that everything is, you know, good to go. Um, it's important to remember that your hair is going to be a lot more fragile when it's wet, especially if you have chemically processed hair. So that means if your hair is colored or bleached, relaxed, anything like that, you're just going to want to give it that extra bit of TLC. Um, this isn't a process that really should be rushed. You're going to want to be super patient with your hair and really just work your way through and kind of understand the needs of what your hair has. Um, I only half rinsed out the conditioner from Faven's hair and I don't really dry the hair when um, I'm leaving the sink. So at this point now, after I'm done detangling, I will take a microfiber cloth. This guy I got from the Dollar Tree in the car section, um, but I will use the microfiber cloth to gently scrunch out and squeeze out as much of the remaining water that is left in the hair, um, just so it's still not totally dripping wet. Um, the reason I'm using a microfiber cloth is because it's going to be a lot more gentle on the hair as opposed to the regular fibers of a regular towel. So it's going to prevent any extra frizziness that would come from that. Um, if you don't have a microfiber cloth, uh, you could also grab an old cotton t-shirt and you can just, same method, just scrunch out the water using that as well. So generally whenever I am sectioning out hair for a braid out, I generally will section out a center part and an ear to ear sectioning. So I will do a middle part from the center right now. So we'll separate the left and the right side. Um, don't worry if you can't get it perfect. I wouldn't obsess over that when you're first starting out. Definitely practice makes perfect. And then you're also gonna separate from ear to ear. So you can try to get kind of a straight line down. Um, it is worth it to take a little bit of time when you're first starting this out because it will be the blueprint of your style if you are wanting to do a more intricate style. Um, but if you're just wanting to take this out in a day or two, don't get too caught up. So once you have your quadrant sectioned out, I would take one of those four sections, one in the back. So we're going to start in the back right. And then I would take your leave-in conditioner. So I'm using some conditioner and some water mixed together in that spray bottle. And I would just make sure the hair is well saturated and that you're still able to detangle and run those fingers through. Next, you're gonna take your tail comb and you are gonna split this section in half. So I know that there are two people here and I can obviously, you know, clearly see the back of Faven's head when I'm doing her hair. Um, but if you were doing this on yourself, I would recommend just kind of having a handheld mirror and just holding it so you can kind of double check your sectioning in the mirror until you're happy with it. Um, you could also just kind of braid um, into the four quadrants if your hair is long enough as well. If you don't want to do crazy sectioning, um, you know, and just keep it simple. Honestly, you can really do whatever you want when it comes to the sectioning. There aren't rules. That's part of the artistic freedom and the beauty that comes with doing braids. Um, I think here I was debating even. I'm just playing around and trying to visualize and map how I want the sectioning to be. But again, it's worth it to take some time and, you know, look at some photos, figure out, you know, what, uh, how you want to map your hair, essentially. So once you're satisfied with your first section and you feel like you're ready to start your first braid, I would take some gel on your fingertips and just kind of dab it along the, um, 
lines of the sectioning to define those sectionings and parts. Um, I'm using Eco Gel, uh, the olive oil one. So that one has a really strong hold. That one's good for hair types like Fabens. Um, it is going to be really good for when you want to have something with a sleek hold, or even if you're kind of trying to do a slicked ponytail or a bun, that's something I recommend. So this is really good that I went back and fixed this because in retrospect, watching this was really bothering me. And it's a really good point that it is never too late to just get up in there and fix your sectioning. Um, if you see that the line's not straight and, and if you care, this is only if you care, um, it's worth it to go in there and fix it. So now I'm using my comb to really define those parts once again and then I'm using my other hand to grab the hair and kind of twist it around itself as you can see. So I'm making sure to have a really strong grip but I'm not pulling the hair from the scalp in a way that you know it's ripping out. It's mostly the grip that is in my fingertips. Um, that is a really important thing to remember because it's gonna stick with you the entire time throughout your braiding. Now I'm taking an elastic and I am wrapping the hair around, um, just making a nice tight ponytail. So I'm using the thicker, softer elastics here, which I tend to prefer because they're a little bit more gentle on your hair. Whereas some of those other, um, like those smaller elastics, the thin ones, those can kind of rip out your hair if you're not careful when you're taking them out. So that's just something to be aware of. I think the rubber band method is an excellent braiding method for anyone that's kind of newer starting out or if you're not as confident in your braiding abilities, especially if you struggle with getting it tighter at the scalp or the root of the braid. So you're going to want to make sure that the hair and the elastic is nice and tight and then you're going to want to split the section into three parts. So I like to take um, a little peace sign over there and I just cut into the hair with my fingers and then you should have three equal sections. Um, so you can kind of take your time and using your index and your thumb, uh, just kind of smooth out each individual section and just make sure that you have them clearly defined. And using your index and thumb the entire time, those are going to be um, kind of your grabbing points. So essentially, you are going to be weaving these three pieces of hair around each other. So I personally find it easier to go underhand. Some people find it easier to do overhand. Uh, I would say as you're learning to just do whatever feels most comfortable for you. But I'm going to start with the right side and I am going to bring it into the middle. So it's going to trade places with the middle piece and that middle piece is now going to swap over to the right. The same thing is going to happen with the piece on the left. It's now going to go in the middle and the piece that was in the middle is now on the left. So they've done a little weaving dance. That piece on the right is now going in the middle and that piece that was in the middle is now on the right. Same thing, piece on the left is going in the middle so the piece in the middle is now on the left. Piece on the right is going in the middle. Now the piece in the middle is now, you, I, you get it. You could make a song out of it, but you are basically getting a rhythm and you are getting a dance. The hair is going to smoothly just keep wrapping around each other. So as long as you have a tight grip with your index and your thumb, like uh, I've been mentioning before, your braid should continue to be tight. Um, and you can also smooth the hair as I'm doing. You can kind of see as I pull it down as I'm continuing the braid. So again, it really all comes down to your index and your thumb, that grip that you're having. Um, and just a lot of tension as well. You can see that I am going to make Faven keep looking down and as I get to the ends of her hair, um, I'm making sure to kind of pull. I'm not, I'm not hurting her or, you know, pulling so hard that, um, you know, the hair is coming out of her scalp, but you can see I'm using my right hand there to smooth the hair and I'm just continuing to do the, the dance. So then once you approach the end of your braid, um, I would just secure it using another elastic. 
So I find it easiest to section into the next quadrant for the next braid. So if you just follow that line at the top there where you did the start of that first braid and then you follow it onto the next section, um, you should be able to, if you did it right, to have a straight line. But this is perfect because I did not do it right, so I do not have a straight line. So I am just here to prove a point to y'all that it's really worth it to take your time when you guys are sectioning at the beginning, those quadrants, because otherwise you're going to probably end up doing it later. So if you care, learn from my mistakes. Now that I'm back on track, I am just following through with that first line I was talking about and just clearly fixing up these quadrants, sectioning them back out of the way. And then I am going to rehydrate the hair a little bit with some leave-in conditioner. If you notice that your hair is feeling dry or getting frizzy, anything like that, just hit it with some leave-in conditioner. Um, just be nice and generous with it, honestly. Again, I just mixed in some of my, I was using the Maui Moisture Conditioner. I mixed up mostly that, like probably the ratio is, I don't know, maybe three to one conditioner to water. And then I just have it like a little lumpy in the spray bottle. So it's mo almost like putting direct conditioner to the hair. Um, and then I will just hydrate it to make sure it's like kind of got a nice slip to it. And then I am going in again with the Eco Style Gel and I'm defining those parts and just kind of rubbing it with my fingers. Then again, you could go in with your comb and just kind of get those parts nice and defined and then go in with the elastic and repeat the same thing sectioning wise. So once you have the elastic in there, you're going to want to make sure that you have the hair nice and tight and then you're going to want to split the section into three once again and we are going to repeat with that same dance. So I've slowed this down and I am going underhand and I start with that right side. She's going to go under the middle um, and trade places so that means the middle is coming to the right. Then the left is coming to the middle, so the middle went to the left. The right's going to the middle, and the middle is now on the right. And you just continue to wrap it that way. Um, I think you just have to continue to watch, and you have to just try. Um, I think if you take three pieces of string, you can kind of practice braiding things that aren't your hair. It's one of those things that the more mechanical practice that you get with your hands, you do get better with with time as well as the tension that builds up in the grip of your um you know the balls of your fingers your index and your thumb that muscle also is acquired and you know strengthened with time so the more you practice and the more you're doing this you know the better your braids will look with time so another option and kind of tip for beginners that i would recommend um not even necessarily for beginners because it is, again it will come down to preference uh, it really depends on my mood if i do this or not but as you'll see here um, you can kind of pre-section when you're doing the rubber band method so um, if you're ever watching videos on instagram or youtube you'll see a lot of hairstylists like sometimes they'll do the full head and rubber band so it's all sectioned out that way first um, so that can kind of be helpful if you do want to do kind of something that's a bit more intricate with the sectioning um, if you're just unsure um, and, and kind of as you if you want to start diving into the world um, once you get confident in you know just like your skill level with your braids it's pretty easy to learn to add in extensions um, so that could be helpful to um, kind of adding into the rubber band method there as well but you can see here what I'm doing is you know that back section so that ended up that back quadrant um, ended up just being split into four you know just basically in four so now we're just gonna tie that off with the rubber band and then you can kind of clearly see that we got those nice clean crisp lines and if you were doing this on yourself and if you were you know holding your handheld mirror and looking you know in the bathroom mirror or something like that um, you can kind of clearly see a crisscross like uh, I, even my sectioning is obviously not perfect as you're watching this but definitely patience is a virtue when you're doing hair um, you know this comes with our culture like 
I think it comes with self-acceptance too and loving your hair. Like, um, I love learning to braid my hair and, and kind of accepting myself and, you know, my ancestors and, you know, the large part of what comes with that. So I think definitely um, try not to get too hard on yourself if it's not perfect. Like, you know, things aren't, things aren't meant to be perfect. I think it is important to mention that with a style like this, when we are, you know, we're not using extensions and we're kind of doing larger sectioning, um, the effect of this is kind of to have more of a braid out that we can take out in, you know, a couple of days and we can still wear that natural style underneath, especially if you're, you know, putting in some curl creams or whatever other gels. Um, this isn't a look that you're going to want to keep in for a really long time as well. Um, this is going to be a more short-term braid style, so it's not going to be box braids or anything like that. I mean, you could definitely keep this style in as long as you're comfortable. Um, I, I probably wouldn't suggest keeping it in, you know, longer than kind of 10 days because um, you kind of do want to get in there and wash your scalp. Um, mind you, you want to remember all, this, all the gel that we are applying at your scalp and I know personally when I do have braids in, my scalp does get pretty dry. So in the meantime, you know, while when you do have this style, I would probably recommend oiling your scalp. So I do like to use, you know, some coconut oil. Argan oil is really great. Um, Jamaican black castor oil is great if you're trying to grow your hair. So you can see here when I get to the front, um, I like to make sure that I'm really gentle with those edges. So I will kind of use the Eco Styler gel to kind of gel some of the edges forward and kind of shape those um, you want to be really really gentle when you're getting to those areas when you're tying those rubber bands and you're pulling um, even in general if you're not doing braids or any braid out like you don't want to lose your edges you know that's the first thing everyone says that's the first thing everyone notices so anytime you're getting braids just be really gentle there and just make sure to leave your edges out um, because you don't want to snatch your edges so when you're doing this on yourself, I would also probably recommend pre-sectioning these with the rubber pans, like I was mentioning before. Um, that will definitely make your life a lot easier and you can kind of just blueprint, have a good idea of how you're going to do the sectioning. You can make sure that you look super cute, you can do something fun, something different. Um, I mean, when I first started doing like my own hair, sometimes I would just make the front look super good, get my selfies, and then the back would just be super janky, just like party in the back who cares um, it's a braid out like I was just trying to get it for the braid effect anyway anyways that's all in the past now I know better and I'm helping y'all learn how to do a braid out um, the camera died so we lost a little bit of footage but yeah you're just gonna continue so I basically pre-sectioned all of the front like I was saying um, loaded up with that leave-in like we're doing and I think this is the last braid like we're just finishing it off so again, like major takeaways, like you can section this however you really want to. Um, even if you just wanted to do two braids um, for each quadrant, uh, just one braid, like, you know, we definitely did larger braids in the back and smaller ones on the top. But like I said before, that's where the fun kind of comes in and that's where you get to personalize it and just have your own creative flair and your own creative touch. So definitely um, in terms of hair care for this, I would make sure that you either are wearing a bonnet or you are wrapping your hair with a satin scarf or if you are using, you know, satin pillowcases, um, all of that is going to help with the longevity of this hairstyle um, and just, you know, limiting the frizziness and the fuzziness. Um, in general, if you can sleep with a satin pillowcase, that's, that's going to do you a big favor for breakage, especially if you move a lot in your sleep. Um, big hack, Dollar Tree's got those too. So now it is time to do the infamous edges. So I'm going to go in there with my Eco Styler Gel. So that green guy that I'm holding there, that's the one I've been talking about this whole video. Um, and I, I literally load it directly up onto a toothbrush. Um, this is a separate toothbrush, I don't use this on my teeth, I bought this specifically for my edges. Um, and yeah, I load it up on the brush and I, I paint the edges down and I'm using my finger to kind of hold it down into place. Like literally shaping it, it's like finger painting, um, you're literally pushing it and shaping it. Um, it is an art, it is a whole art form. 
braids itself, man, it's an art. It's, it's truly an art form, you know, be proud to be black. <laughs> so you can really match your accessories with your braids to however you want. So we kind of stuck with a pastel theme today and we did those, you know, the larger, thicker, softer elastics. But there is so many options out there. You could use like those really thin elastics, um, all sorts of colors. Right now I'm adding on some, you know, I think they're called like braid cuffs or braid jewelry. Um, I picked these up at Melinda Hair. It's up on Kingsway, um, kind of closer to Boundary Road towards Burnaby there. Um, if you guys have been to Abantu, um, Melinda Hair I think has the cheapest hair extensions that I have found at $5 a pack. Um, and you know, the guy, he always hooks it up. He's got plenty of accessories, super affordable. Um, so I think it's great to kind of, you can stock up there. And then yeah, these braid cups are great because you can kind of just customize your look completely, put them all over. Uh, they even wanted to do purple on one side and red on the other side. Um, honestly, there are so many ways for you to customize your braids, even just a individual simple braid style like this with the sectioning, accessories, it, it's endless and I think that if you can get down the, the simple mechanic of a three strand braid um, there's no there's no reason why you couldn't build off that to do cornrows or anything else so I really hope that um, I inspired some of you today to maybe you know play around with your hair and explore some other options um, maybe even book an appointment with a stylist to get braids if you never have braids if you know this looks like a little bit too much for you um, you know there's so many things out there I would even recommend you know going on YouTube and exploring you know wash and go options you know and really I think the number one thing I would do is you know when you're looking at inspiration is really looking at, at people who look like you like looking at other black people who who have a similar texture to what you have and I think that will give you the most realistic expectations and the best results that you know you're gonna be able to achieve thank you so much for watching and happy black history month guys <laughs>